Hello all, welcome to the third uh, JMeter training tutorial or video and now is the time for live action. We have learned a couple of basic elements of JMeter and today we will record a new test, in fact our first test and we will see what all elements we can add to it and how we can run the test. So let's see what is the content of this session. So in this session we are going to use bad boy. Bad Boy is another tool which is used for functional testing. It is largely free, uh, but here we are going to use Bad Boy to record JMeter scripts. Then we will load this, the test which we record in Bad Boy to JMeter, which we would be doing uh, through JMX file. JMX is a format which JMeter uses for its test plan. We would also see something called loop controller. We will analyze samplers which are recorded from bad boy we would rename our samplers we would add some response assertion uh, we would add some listeners we had seen listener in previous session so in this session we would uh, use two listeners view results in tree and aggregate report we would run our test analyze the results and then we will modify our response assertion so that we could raise some false alarm and we will run the test again so let's begin so let's begin with the bad boy so to be able to use bad boy first you have to download the bad boy and you can download it using the URL which I have mentioned here. It is http http colon slash slash www.batboy.com.au slash download slash index. It is absolutely free, so you do not have to pay anything. Once you have downloaded Bad Boy, then you can start it and it would look something like this. And now we can start recording uh, our steps for an application which we want to subject for load testing. So here I am using uh, Mercury tour website which is a site which could be used for testing and this is something which I have to specify in the browser bar which is available in the bad boy here so if you see there's a red button which is enabled already it means that it's recording so recording is already taking place all so if I start uh, navigating through this website bad boy will record my steps so let, let me begin so I will just hit the green button here which means launch yeah so if you see here the first step has been recorded which is a welcome page and now i go to register page and then i add in some information say first name so i will say um, what do i say okay i will say selenium as first name last name is uh, web driver and i will not enter any other information i think this is enough and i'll say submit yeah, so since it is a sample website, there is no verification as such and it assumes that registration is over. So if you see here, we have a completed registration here. Now we can stop recording and we can export this response. Uh, we can export this test to JMeter. So now we click on this button and I'm going to store it in my documents folder. So I'll save it as Mercury tour and if you see the file type uh, sorry Mercury tour and if you see the file type it is JMX which is JMeter file so I save it now all right so it is saved now let's launch JMeter so this is how JMeter looks like when you launch it we have seen it many times now so it should be easy and now we are going to import the import the test which we recorded using bad boy so let's say file open Okay, I'm on my documents folder and I have Mercury Tour.jmx here, so let's open it. Alright, so this is what comes here. So we had seen HTTP Cookie Manager in earlier session. So HTTP Cookie Manager is used to save the cookies, otherwise JMeter is going to ignore it. Uh, we are not going to have any user-defined variable in this tutorial, so let's ignore it for time being. He header Manager can also be used to, you know, customize HTTP header but we are not going to use it in this session also so let's not worry about it so let's see what we have next so we have a controller here we had seen two controllers in the previous session and in this session we see the loop controller so loop controller is used to uh, loop through the samples which are available in this controller uh, so we can give the loop count here since here loop count is one it means each sample or each sampler which is available under the loop controller would be run only once if we want to run it indefinitely then we can select forever all right then let's see what we have next so we have couple of http sampler here we have three sampler here 
we were on the Mercury welcome page, then registration page, and then create account page. So let's rename them so that you know they appear better to us. If you remember how we used to use uh, sampler earlier, we used to go to sampler and we use HTTP request, and this is the same way we have sampler coming here, but here we have samplers which are recorded from bad boy. We had not created them ourselves. Let me remove this last sampler. Okay, so we comes to the first HTTP request sampler, and let's name it as uh, welcome page. Okay, so here we have server name, we have port, we have protocol which is HTTP, uh, method type is get, because we get a page here, there is no submission happening, and the path is After com, we have slash mercurywelcome.php, so it forms the complete URL, and we do not have any parameters here. Okay, so the next, so see here, the welcome, uh, the sampler has been renamed as welcome. Then we were on registration page, so let's name it as um, registration. All right, so here server name remains the same, and path, sorry, path has been changed to slash mercuryregister.php. And here we have one parameter which is being sent, uh, which which is sent with this request. All right. So let's come to the last uh, sampler, HTTP sampler, which is create account. So let's name it as create account page. So this is the page which is displayed when we uh, confirm the submission or when we click the submit button. So here we have path as mercury create account dot php. And if you remember, I had, let me maximize this window. Yeah, if you remember, I had uh, sent first name as Selenium, last name as WebDriver, but I had not given rest of the parameters. So rest of the parameters are empty here. So if I want to give parameters with different values here, I can, I can you know, mention them here. But let's keep it as it is for time being. All right, so we have three samplers now, three HTTP sampler and one loop controller. So let's see what we have next. All right, so we have loop controller, we have seen the samplers, we have renamed them. Now let's add some response assertion to Mercury registration sampler. So let's go back to Mercury registration PHP. Uh, can I get it from here? Okay, if I cannot get it from here, then I will again launch the website. Uh, registration. Okay, so in registration page, we see there is a version control, uh, version number being displayed. So in our JMeter test, we will keep an assertion now. So let me go back to JMeter and I go to registration page and I will add an assertion here and I will add assertion of type response assertion and I will select pattern to test here and I will add a pattern here. So it means that on registration page, we would have a response assertion, we would have an assertion being carried out that whether we have the text v.0110 so on being displayed or not. So this means that while running the load test, we can also verify that whether page had page has certain attributes or not. So we will not just verify the response time or throughput or other parameters. We should also verify or we should also keep some functional test point to verify that whether functionality is working fine or not. So we have a response assertion here. Now let's see what we have next. All right, so let's add two listeners also. First is view result in free and aggregate report, which we had seen, seen in previous session. So let me add them at the sam at the controller level. Yeah, so we have listener here, view results in free. All right, so we have view results in free and one more listener here, which is aggregate report. So we had seen in previous uh, tutorial that listeners are used to listen to test result or to see what uh, what JMeter sees when test is run so that we can verify the results or we can analyze the results. All right, so I think uh, we have enough now and we are ready to run our test. So let's run our test. We had not run test so far. In fact, this is our first test. So let's see what we have in thread group. Thread group is something which we had seen in previous session. It, identifies or it defines the number of users so we have one user ramp up period is one second and loop count is also one now let's run our test so i would also suggest you to keep the number of users to minimum because uh, the website which we are using is a public website and we do not want to bombard it with lots of user requests so let me let me click the run button here 
Uh, before that, I'll bring control on view results in three. Let's run. So run is disabled, and if you if you had noticed, there was red symbol here, and it was enabled. Uh, or I can run the test again to show it quickly. So this would be disabled. The red, the green symbol would be disabled when test is running, and the stop would be enabled. Yeah, stop is enabled now. Test is running, and test is over. And red symbol is uh, green symbol is turned on again. So let's analyze our results now. So we have view results in tree. So this is a welcome page. So in view results in tree listener, we can see our request. So this is a request with a couple of headers. And then we have response data, which is in HTML format. OK. And then we have registration page. So in registration, pa registration page also, we have the request with a with couple of headers and the response data. Uh, this is also a get request. And then we have create account page, which is a post request because we are submitting a form here. So we have some cookie data and some headers, and then we have response being received. Let's have a look at aggregate report. So we had seen in aggregate report, we would have one row for each run. So we have a welcome page a sample here, registration page. Let me make it a little bit. Registration, registration page sam sampler here, as well as create account page. Since we are running test with just one user, so sample count is one. Average, median, 90 percentile, minimum, maximum, everything is the uh, same because we have just one sample here and we have no errors here. So this is our first test run. And since we had one response assertion also, so it means this was also successful. Now let's do one thing. Let's, let's inject one error. Let's see what happens when we have an error. Now how do we inject error? So let's, let's change this pattern. Let's make it something which is not right. So I will make it... Uh, Mm. What do we do? Okay, let me write 090p. So we know that this version number is wrong. And now if I run my test, then we should see some errors. So let me clear these results. You can just hit Control E and previous test results would disappear. And now we will run our test again and see what happens. All right, so test run is over pretty quick because we are running with just one user. So welcome page was successful with the get request. Registration page failed. OK, so it, it is again with the get request and the response data. But if you see, it has failed because our response assertion has failed. We were expecting OPL in the version, num version number. But we know that there is no such version number. This is the error which we injected. And this is something which causes test failure. In the real time, you may have a real failure wherein page does not have lots of parameters which are expected to be there, and test would fail for genuine reasons. And this is how it would look real time. Okay, and create account page, of course, has succeeded because we did not inject any error there. Let's see what is there in the aggregate report. Okay, in aggregate report, welcome page has succeeded with one sample. Registration page has 100% failure rate. 100% failure rate, of course, because of response assertion, our response assertion failed. And then we have create account page, which has succeeded. There is no failure. All right, so this is something which, which teaches us how we may have uh, failures in real time when we have our test being set up and we have response assertion and how we can find out the reason for errors. So let's get back to the content and see if we are missing on something. Mm -hmm. So we saw how we can use Batfly to record a JMeter test and then we exported it to JMeter in JMX file. We saw loop controller. We also saw samplers which are recorded from Batfly and we renamed them. We also saw couple of parameters which were being passed to in our test. We added a response assertion. We have a couple of listeners in our test. We executed our test and we analyzed the test results. We also modified the response assertion to inject some failures, to raise some false alarm and to see how failures look in the real time in test. Okay, so this brings us to an end of this session, pretty short, but I think it, it gives you an idea of how you can record your own test, how you can modify them, and how you can run them. I hope you find this session useful, and if so, then please click the like button. And 
I hope you will be waiting for next tutorials. I'll see you soon. Good luck with learning. Bye-bye.